The melodic ester synthesis is a procedure that is really badly named. Take a look at this and you'll see what I mean. The primary alkyl group or methyl that has a good leaving group attached is one of the starting materials and the other one is a diester. And I'm going to write it like this because this second carboethoxy group is lost in this process that makes carboxylic acids. So it starts with a compound called diethylmalonate and it makes carboxylic acids, not esters. It's called the malonic ester synthesis because the old timers called this malonic ester. So let's change the title here. And here's the guy that's lost and it's replaced by the alkyl group that I've just highlighted in blue. Here it is in the product. And here's a new carbon-carbon bond. If you're thinking you've seen something a whole lot like this already, well, you're probably thinking of the direct alkylation of ethyl acetate using LDA as a base and a primary alkyl halide. Take a look. Like the malonic ester synthesis, this adds two carbons to the alkyl bromide we're starting with. And then one of those carbons is a carboethoxy group. So this makes esters. It's pretty much equivalent to making carboxylic acids because esters can be saponified to carboxylic acids in very high yields. So how do the two methods compare with each other? Well, the use of LDA and direct alkylation is intellectually appealing, but it has some significant drawbacks when we get to the laboratory. LDA, lithium diisopropyl amide, is expensive to make. It's challenging to handle because you must avoid all traces of water, and it's very hard to scale to industrial level synthesis. So if there's an alternative that avoids some of these drawbacks, it's really worth taking a look at. This synthesis begins with diethylmalonate, which is treated with sodium methoxide as a base. And then the second step is treated with the alkyl halide. This puts the alkyl group on the carbon that's sandwiched between the two carbonyl groups. The diester first is treated with aqueous base. This is the saponification I talked about. It's in base, so it makes a salt, and we add a strong acid. And then we'll heat this, which causes loss of the carboxyl group. So it's a five-step synthesis, but some of these steps are extremely high yield. The overall approach gives good yields. Now the mechanism of this reaction is very much like what you saw for the acetoacetic ester synthesis of methyl ketones. When diethylmalonate is treated with sodium methoxide, that hydrogen between the two carbonyl groups is quantitatively removed. We can follow that using arrow pushing to put the pair of electrons on that carbon. That's an anion that is especially stable because it's a double enolate. There are two more resonance structures, and these resonance structures put the negative charge on oxygen, which accommodates it much better. Still, remarkably, this anion reacts at the carbon, not the oxygens, when it's treated with an alkyl halide. This is an SN2 type of reaction. We see displacement of the halide as a leaving group. And in talking about it as an SN2 reaction, you see why we need a primary alkyl halide. Secondary alkyl halides give poor yields in SN2 reactions and tertiary alkyl halides don't do SN2 reactions at all. Next we need to talk about decarboxylation. Beta carbonyl carboxylic acids undergo decarboxylation so we need to saponify the ester to make an acid. The saponification is done by using aqueous base. This hydrolyzes the ester to the salt and this disalt, when treated with sulfuric acid, is protonated to make the dicarboxylic acid. Now this structure is symmetric, so we can think of either carboxylic acid group as the one being lost. Because we usually write carboxylic acids to the right, I'm going to write a mechanism that shows losing the carboxylic acid on the left. I've rewritten the dicarboxylic acid structure to make it easy to show loss of the carboxylic acid group. There's a simultaneous transfer of the proton to this carbonyl, from this one, as these electrons then can be used to make a double bond with that carbon. But that can only happen when this bond breaks, when we make a double bond between these two carbons. This is what we call a concerted reaction. Everything happens at the same time. And the initial product is an enol. And we know that enols tautomerize to make the carbonyl compounds preferentially. So although it's an equilibrium, only a very small amount would be in the enol form. And during this tautomerization, we regenerate the carboxyl group. And to keep everything clear, I've put the alkyl group in bright blue, and I've shown the new carbon-carbon bond in tan. 
This is only useful in the context of organic synthesis, so let's take a look at the use of the Wannick ester synthesis in retroplanning. When we need to make a carboxylic acid that's a substituted acetic acid, the new bond will be here, which tells us that the alkyl bromine we need is this one. Notice I've drawn the carbon bromine bond in the same orientation as the new bond we're going to make and we'll use diethylmalonate. I've drawn this bond in the orientation it will be, and the bond that will be broken is this one that sticks straight down. And remember that this must be primary or methyl. So to summarize, we have two methods. One makes an ester, one makes an acid. They both are useful. Direct alkylation using LDA often is used for research laboratory scale work. In the melodic ester synthesis, it's used for larger scale work and other applications where we want to avoid using LDA, either because it's expensive or hard to handle, or other groups in the molecule are sensitive to it.